episode 997 of No BS Job Search Advice Radio. It's Saturday, and I'm your host, Jeff Altman, the Big Game Hunter. And welcome. Tuesday is the big day. Let's do the math. 997, Tuesday is episode 1000. And I am really excited because the fact of the matter is, this show will be the first one to ever hit that number in iTunes. So, yay! And today, it's a show about framing a negotiation. Is it true that the first one who says the number loses? Hope you find this one helpful. Hope you find it provocative and you give it five stars in iTunes or Stitcher. Also want to mention that if you have some time today, visit Skillshare and look up my courses on job hunting. Currently have three there. More are going to be coming very soon, particularly around negotiating salary. So again, Jeff Alpin, the big game hunter, is here. And connect with me on Facebook. My page there is facebook.com, no BS coaching advice. And you'll get notices when I release new content through Facebook. Also, LinkedIn, linkedin.com forward slash IN forward slash the big game hunter. Excuse me, the big game hunter. Mention that you listen to the show because I love hearing from you folks. It just puts a big smile on my face. It really does. And now let's get going, okay? Now, this is one about negotiating. And the classic belief that people have is he or she who names the number first loses. And, you know, I'll, I'll just say that that may not be true. You know, the reason for that is really very simple. There's a social psychology thought that has been proven that says that the one who frames the negotiation with the number first actually sets the tone for the conversation. So if you think about employers and what they do, employers try to frame the negotiation by an increase on your current salary. And job hunters are always afraid to state what they're looking for because they're afraid they're going to leave a number on the table. So step number one is really, this is the reason why you have to do research about what your value is. What's the market for what you do? What do firms pay for that? And you start shooting at the very high level of that value or above. Why? Because when you're asked the salary that you're looking for, you want to always be at the top point or slightly above it. So this way you can do the concession downward. Now, let me give you the social psychology example. There's this guy named Dan Ariely who's done a ton of research uh, in negotiating. And he talked about this fascinating study he had done. And it's very funny when you think about it. But he uses the example of he's in a class. He asks everyone the last two digits of their social security number. So some people have a 1-2, some people have a 9-5, some people have a 9-8, some people have a 4-1, and they all you know, have this number in mind. And then from there, they bring out a product, and they say, you know, we want you to make an offer on this product based, up, uh, based upon whatever criteria you think is appropriate. And consistently, People start to think in terms of first the last two digits of their social security number and then coming in lower than that. So the nine, eight people might come in at 86, but the 14 people may come in at nine and the 44 people may come in at 38. See, the number helped frame their thinking. So they worked off of that number, even though it was completely irrelevant to what was being purchased and what its value was. Now, as a result, this is why you need to be thinking in terms of setting the market for what you do in relation to what you research the market is. Now, you can't, I'll give you a a, a simple example. You can't take a job that's valued at $50,000 and say, I want 100 and negotiate from there because firms are just going to roll their eyes and walk it, you know, walk away saying they're not interested because it's too big a, a discrepancy. But you know, if you make 45, for example, and the market for what you do is 50 and you ask for 53 to 55, you know, then there's wiggle room where they feel like they're getting a good deal by getting you down from there. And 
you feel like you've gotten a good deal because you got them to the max number. So, you know, the old saw about he or she who names the number first may not be right. And I, I just want to leap in here and say, you know, yes, I understand in some instances you may be leaving money on the table. But in most instances, you're not because you know what the market is for what they're doing. And you're working from that knowledge, not some pie in the sky, uh, ephemeral, you know, number you pulled out of the air. You're working from real information for what the value is for what you do and negotiating from there. So that's today's show. I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, here's a few ways to engage with me. First of all, I just want to say that I no longer do recruiting. I coach people to perform at a high level. So again, I no longer do recruiting. But if you visit my website, which is TheBigGameHunter.us. Look at the tabs on the top and you'll see a menu of choices for you. First of all, you can hire me to do a resume and or LinkedIn profile critique, interview preparation, helping you with a salary negotiation, answering your question, advising you about a decision you have to make about job offers. That's all there is an option. I can do a job search makeover with you where we critique everything you've been doing in your search up until that point and come up with alternatives. If you're relatively early in your search, we can do a complete coaching program where I work with you from beginning to end. It's in half hour increments, so it doesn't take a lot of time in each session. And that's another way you can do it. You can also connect with me on LinkedIn at linkedin.com forward slash IN forward slash the big game hunter. Mention that you listen to the show because I love hearing with folks who are who like the show and are interested in my help. Lastly, I also want to mention I've got a lot of information at the big game hunter.us and at times it seems like it's too much. So you can look at the best of my material at JobSearchCoachingHQ.com where I have curated information that you can watch, listen to, or read that will help you find work more quickly. Again, that's JobSearchCoachingHQ.com. I'll be back tomorrow with more. And in the meantime, hope you have a great day. Take care. <music>